In this lesson, we will learn how to calculate internal forces and moments in structural members. Over the past couple of lessons, we have learned how to calculate forces and moments in static systems using a variety of methods. These methods include equilibrium of a particle, equilibrium of a rigid body, reduction of distributed loads, analysis of trusses using the method of joints, and analysis of trusses using the method of sections. Today, we will learn how to calculate internal forces using the method of sections. Let's start by considering the cantilever beam shown in the image. Forces P1 and P2 act on the beam. If we want to find the forces at point B, we can start by determining the reactions at A. We can apply the equations of equilibrium which in this case would be the forces in the x direction, forces in the y direction, and moments at A, in order to find the reactions at that fixed support. After we find the reactions at A, we can create a cut at B. This cut will divide our beam into two sections, a section on the left and a section on the right. We can select either of these two sections and then apply the equations of equilibrium again to find the internal forces at B. This will result in three values. We will have a normal force that acts normal to the section cut. In this case, the normal force is acting along the x-axis. We will have a shear force that acts tangential to the section cut. In this example, the shear force is acting along the y-axis. And we will have a bending moment. Notice that depending on which side of the section you use, left or right, the direction of the arrows will be different. Therefore, it's important to establish a sign convention in order to understand how our internal forces are affecting our members. In this case, our normal force will be positive if the element is in tension, like in the image, or negative if the element is in compression. Our shear force will be positive if it rotates our element clockwise. Think of the steering wheel example that we did in class. Our bending moment will be positive if it bends the segment concave upward. Now notice that if we were to study the section on the other side, the internal forces would have different directions of the arrows. This following image provides different directions of positive normal, positive shear, and positive moments. A couple of things to note are, first, the direction of the arrows varies if the section cut is on the left or on the right side. This is because internal forces and internal moments are not force vectors. This may be a little bit confusing because they do have a magnitude and we can sort of give them a direction when we use arrows to represent them. In two-dimensional systems, we only have one normal component and one shear component and one moment component. However, when we look at three-dimensional system, we will have more components for forces and more components for moments. In the example, we have one normal force component, we have two shear force components, and we have three moment components. The normal force component will always act normal to the section cut. The two shear force components will act tangential to the section cut. In the case of moments, if the moment acts along an axis that is tangential to the section cut, it is called a bending moment. If the moment acts normal to the section cut, it is called a torsional moment. In order to analyze internal forces, we can break down our procedure into four steps. First, we should always try to draw a free body diagram of the body. We can use this free body diagram to determine the support reactions and other external forces by applying the equations of equilibrium. This will also allow us to know if our system is statically determinant or statically indeterminate. After we've found all support reactions and other external forces, 
we can select a point to analyze and then cut a section perpendicular to the axis of the body. Once we cut a section, we need to choose whether we want to use the left or right section of that point, and then we can apply the equations of equilibrium to find the internal forces.